Hi there, this is Solid Ronan from Solid Ronan Films and welcome to another episode of Six of the Best where I talk about six of my favourite performances by a certain actor. Um, apologies because I haven't done one for a little while. I'm still getting back into the routine of having some kind of schedule. Um, I will get to director series when I settle in a bit more um, but there might be something a little bit different later in the week. Um, appearing on the channel. So today, as you may have guessed, it's Michelle Pfeiffer, um, an actor that I've had quite an interesting, um, I was going to say relationship with, but that, let's not start that rumour. Um, you know, I never really paid that much attention to Michelle Pfeiffer um, until a film that I will get to. Um, she was never really um, that interesting to me until that film that I'll get to. She's just another one of the beautiful young actors that get um, pigeonholed into a certain role because of their looks. Um, but you could argue she's done better work as she's gotten older. But we'll start with 1983 and Scarface. Now of course this isn't Michelle Pfeiffer's film. This is Al Pacino as he snorts most of Alaska um, and chews scenery like you wouldn't believe. But Michelle Pfeiffer is an important figure in this because she is this cold um, symbol of what Tony Montana wants to attain. I mean, because again, you could argue, well, what's she doing with Robert Loggia in the first place? Because he has power, money, and the white stuff. Um, and that, the white stuff, as for so many people in the 80s, that became the most important thing. And to some people now, it still is. So she's almost like this porcelain doll and again it's the objectification of the woman not only in Hollywood but in that kind of environment as you know I've got the power, I've got the money, I've got the drugs but I need to have this woman as well even though she um, initially has no interest in Tony Montana because he's somewhat rough around the edges so we say um, and she's more polished but inside she's just um, as empty and hollow um, she doesn't have the passion and desire that Montana has but for him it's just to be the top dog um, numero uno the big enchilada um, but you can see why Montana would be at first fascinated with her and desired her because again she's um, this beautiful white woman um, the symbol of success she's blonde um, which obviously means a lot in Hollywood and obviously in that society as well so again she's she's not in the film that much but again she is a symbol of that um, the world is yours mentality and again in that setting the beautiful woman is the same as money and drugs and power um, it's just another thing to get another thing to own um, and obviously she takes to the white stuff a lot more um, than an interest in Tony Montana um, but then obviously he becomes somewhat more obsessed with the white stuff than reality itself 
Um, so that's Scarface, fairly obvious place to start. Um, but then she did comedy and was adept at that. Obviously did Married to the Mob um, and other things. But then probably her next big landmark um, is Batman Returns. This is the 4K. The Batman film that's not really got that much of Batman in it. Um, and personally it's all the better for it. I mean Batman... I mean, obviously I've got quite a lot of Batman stuff, but it's, Batman's not really that interesting a character. Um, and he is kind of outnumbered here with Pfeiffer, with Pfeiffer, with Michelle Pfeiffer's um, Catwoman and Danny DeVito as the Penguin. Of course, um, Christopher Walken. Um, why Christopher Walken's not in the cover, I mean, I find it, Quite offensive. Christopher Walken should have actually been the cover instead of Batman. But there you go. Um, I suppose Batman is in the title of the film. Um, but Michelle Pfeiffer is poured into the cat. So again, this is about male fantasy and this thing of a woman who's like mousy and they try and uglify Michelle Pfeiffer and try and make her out to be this dowdy secretary who nobody listens to. Um, especially Max, Max Shrek, Christopher Walken as her boss. Um, doesn't listen to her. She brings up ideas and he just kind of gives her the Walken look. Um, and then she accidentally finds some information um, and things take a downturn for her. But then it turns out it's the best thing that happened to her. How she becomes um, Catwoman, how she survives her accident um, isn't really explained but hey it's Batman and obviously her cat woman is much more um, sexual much more S&M um, obviously Julie Neymar I think that was her name um, from the 60s show had quite an effect on people but like Michelle Pfeiffer's um, her delivery of meow, for example, um, is certainly put on the the sadomasochism, the whip, again, delving into more male fantasies of what that character um, would be like. And it's just a, a wonderful um, performance, still grounded um, in reality, but she is running about in leather and pretending to be a cat. But it's a wonderful film. Arguably the best Batman film. Um, perhaps because there's not actually that much Batman in it. Um, and it. But really the next film is the film that I sat up and said, hey, Michelle Pfeiffer, she's pretty great. Um, again, these things don't matter, but to me she should have got an Oscar for this film. Um, of course I'm talking about uh, Mark Scorsese's greatest work, um, The Age of Innocence. Now, Pfeiffer talks about being intimidated beforehand, dealing with Scorsese, dealing with Daniel Day-Lewis, uh, The Method Monkey. But she more than holds her own um, as the Countess Oleska, this outsider, Olenska even, um, this outsider who's been cast adrift from society and her um, by her terrible husband she's come to America for help and aid um, and of course the society knows exactly who she is and what's going on and Daniel Day Lewis falls for her but he's betrothed to Winona Ryder I mean no offence but Winona Ryder or Michelle Pfeiffer and this is where um, I first became attracted to Michelle Pfeiffer um, on a physical level, um, before, you know, wasn't really that attracted to her as an actor or as a woman. Um, but Age of Innocence, this is where the little um, lace gloves were well and truly off. 
Um, she just gives a wonderful performance, a fragile performance, but then the strength underneath, because she's doing things on her own, um, that women in that kind of society didn't do, you know, going places um, unescorted, the shock, the horror. Um, she just gives an absolutely fantastic performance. And as great as Daniel Day-Lewis usually is, with the exception of another um, Scorsese film, of course, Whoops a Daisy indeed. Uh, Michelle Pfeiffer blows Daniel Day Lewis out of the water, and Winona Ryder, who's um, good as the seemingly innocent um, fiance stroke wife of Daniel Day Lewis, but we realise there's something else going on underneath her innocent veneer. Michelle Pfeiffer is the star of the show. Um, the way her eyes are constantly on the verge um, of tears. Um, it's just that fragility, but in her strength. And it does contain um, the most sensual and sexual unbuttoning of a glove in history. Um, if anybody can answer why this doesn't have a 4K, um, I mean, Goodfellas has got a 4K, Raging Bull's got a 4K, Mean Streets is even getting a 4K. Um, why is The Age of Innocence not getting a 4K? It's Scorsese's best film for me. My favourite Scorsese film. It's his most beautiful film. Um, and there's no 4K yet. I'm sure Criterion will get to it eventually once they release every other Scorsese film. Um, but this was... This was the film that... Um, exploded Pfeiffer for me. Now, I haven't seen all of Michelle Pfeiffer's work, but I would say she's never been better than The Age of Innocence. And again, what happens with female actors, especially in Hollywood, once you get a certain age, you go from the kind of object of desire to maternal characters, so, we talk about Mike Nichols' Wolf from 1994, so she's still the object of desire here, but there's definitely a shift. Um, again, this is not her film, this is Jack Nicholson's film, but Michelle Pfeiffer um, is better than Nicholson in this. Um, it is a lot of fun, it's a riff, obviously, on Wolf pictures um, but again it would be a symbol of the fact that she never really got um, as good material as um, The Age of Innocence in the past and then I'm just going to finish with two films that objectively aren't great but I think she's the best thing in them and again this is the transition to now the more maternal roles, but still the attractive maternal roles. Um, so we'll start with Dark Shadows, which I actually think is unfairly forgotten about. Yes, it's based on the much more successful TV show. It's Tim Burton, it's Johnny Depp doing another weirdo performance. But again, Michelle Pfeiffer as the mother of the strange dysfunctional Supernatural Family, again, is the film's um, base. And again, she's strong when she needs to be. She's funny. Um, and it is a kind of underrated Tim Burton film um, who kind of it does get um, abused unfairly. Um, also get Eva Green and Helen Bonham Carter and um, Chloe Moretz as well. It's just a wonderful cast and a fun time and then I'll just finish with another film that's not great objectively but Pfeiffer is it's Luke Besson's The Family with Robert De Niro and this is actually one of De Niro's better modern performances um, or since Heat performances or since Casino uh, performances I know this, it doesn't take much to earn that title 
but De Niro's having a lot of fun in this as well. And again, Pfeiffer as um, the matriarch of this gangster family um, with assumed identities. Um, Tommy Lee Jones turns up um, and sucks the life out of the film as well. Um, but again, this is not high-level stuff, but it's worth watching for Pfeiffer because she's fantastic in it. Um, so that's six of the best of Michelle Pfeiffer and as you can tell for me she hasn't been in too many great films now again part of that is you could argue her looks have hurt her because again if you look a certain way in Hollywood especially if you're a woman especially if you're a blonde woman you do get pigeonholed into certain roles um, and then obviously the older you get you're immediately into mother and grandmother roles. Um, that's the way of the world. That's the way of Hollywood. But certainly, if for some reason you haven't seen Age of Innocence, go watch Age of Innocence. Because um, it's an absolute stunner and her performance um, may change your mind if your mind needs changing um, about Michelle Pfeiffer. But the whole point of this series point in this channel um, is really what do you think what are your six favourite Michelle Pfeiffer performances again um, I'll admit I haven't seen every single Michelle Pfeiffer film um, she's also good in the Witches Eastwick as well um, that's a lot of fun but again kind of overshadowed by Nicholson and Cher and Susan Sarandon because um, Michelle Pfeiffer hadn't done um, Batman Returns um, by that time. So please let me know in the comments some of your Piffy for favourites and hopefully you'll join me again for more Six of the Best. This is Solitary Ronan from Solitary Ronan Films saying farewell.